It is said that in the darkness of the Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History lurks a fearsome yet strange beast. She, yes, she, engages in what is best described as a lyrical interpretive dance, as if a rabid yak had made furious love with a ferret. She wears her best kimono and sequins beret, flits about the hall of human origins in an ecstatic tizzy until she collapses from sheer exhaustion. And then, and only then, does she produce the skull of her favorite hominin, Paranthropus Boisei, and recites this soliloquy. Let us listen as she says it in her native tongue. Ah, oh, let me see. Alas, poor Zinge. I know him, Horatio. A robust hominin of infinite jest, of most excellent flaring zygomatics. He hath borne I bipedal ancestors on his back, commencing roughly 1.8 million years ago. And now, how abhorred in my imagination it is, my old Vi Gorge rises at it. Here hung those lips that I have kissed. I know not how oft. Where be your jibes now, your leakies, your songs, your flashes of merriment that were wont to set the savannah on a roar? What? You act like you've never seen a Sasquatch in the Smithsonian before. Well, here I am. And yeah, this might look kind of absurd, but I got your attention, didn't I? Right? Well, that's why I'm here. I'm here to talk about, I'm gonna take these off, why biological anthropology matters, and why it matters now more than ever to engage with the public as biological anthropologists. Now, you might think it's kind of silly, here I am, dressed as Bigfoot. However, when I do shows like $10 million Bigfoot Bounty, I get to talk about what I love, biological anthropology. Now, follow me here. So when we did the show, we were dealing with Bigfoot hunters. Bigfoot hunters, affectionately known as squatchers, have really interesting ideas of who, what, where, and, well, when Bigfoot exists, because sometimes they think he bounces between dimensions, really weird stuff. But a lot of times, these guys and girls oh, know diddly squatch, yeah, I went there, about primatology. Now, if you're looking for a new species of primate, you would think you would know everything there is to know about primates, right? Like, if I wanted to go back to the future, I would have to know everything there is to know about physics. I'd need Doc Brown, a DeLorean, plutonium from those pesky Libyans. I'd need a red puffy vest. You get the Back to the Future reference. Basically, I would need to know everything there is to know about physics to go back to the future. If you wanted to find a new species of primate, you need to do the same thing. So, on $10 million Bigfoot Bounty, I got to talk about all things primate life histories, behavior, diet, dentition, locomotion. Some squatchers think that Bigfoot walks on uh, four legs and then gets up and runs on two, and I got to explain to them why that's pretty much impossible. Some think that they are big meat eaters, that they fell wild game, and I always ask them, where are the tools, guys? Where are the tools? And a lot of times, they don't have an answer. And a lot of times, they also amend their theories with this new information. So we're actually seeing learning in action. And the cool thing about this is I could talk about this in a classroom. I could teach a primatology class and, and reach 30 students. But <laughs> in theory, if I'm doing a television show and it's well watched, I could reach tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of viewers that might never have the interest or inclination or opportunity to learn a darn thing about primatology or biological anthropology. So it's kind of a win-win. I get to tell the story of one of my favorite things, which is primates. And hopefully I get to entertain people. Hopefully you're slightly entertained because I am hot. Which reminds me, I'm going to change for the next portion. Stay tuned. Woo, I feel a lot better. Now we're going to switch gears. I have also talked about the story of boobs. Yep, I've talked about tatas. Uh, I've made videos about them. I was even on the Today Show talking about uh, flap doodles, chesticles, and whatnot. Uh, and, and the thing is, people might roll their eyes and be like, oh, come on, really, Natalia, boobs? But people come for the boobs, and they stay for the science. Don't, isn't that what we want, right? And when I talk about boobs, I get to talk about things like concealed ovulation, sexual selection, Miocene apes evolving from being quadrupedal to bipeds, all these things that when you go to a cocktail party, you don't expect to find yourself talking about that, but then you do, and all of a sudden, you are the coolest person in the room. So that's a way that you can kind of engage with the public, again, that might not think they want to know about why exactly 
human women have boobs, uh, they might be actually <laughs> very intrigued once you're done telling them all about the story of boobs, the breast tale ever told. <sighs> Boob puns, I love them. Same with butts. When you talk about butts, you get to talk about new forms of locomotion. And I mean, who doesn't like a, a good uh, keister joke, really? Anybody? No? Nobody? Okay. Yeah, right there, right there. You're my bud. Uh, moving on, I now work on a show with a guy you may have heard named Neil deGrasse Tyson, who is the best boss in the universe, or multiverse if that really exists. But it's a great platform to be on. There's actually two platforms. There's the podcast and the TV show, which is on Nat Geo, and you should watch it because it's awesome. And on the podcast, uh, they have a Star Talk All-Star podcast, which allows me to talk about anthropology to an audience that might be looking for more space-related stories. And so on that particular podcast, I've been able to talk about Neanderthals and anatomically modern humans and mixing, climate change and how it's affected primates past, present, and future. I've been able to talk about what makes us human. I've been able to discuss teeth and how they're basically fossils in our mouths. And the cool thing is I get to bring on experts in the field. So it's not just me talking about anthropology, I get to feature some great colleagues that are doing excellent work in their fields. So it's a way that I get to get anthropology out again to a broad audience. And who does not love that? On the TV show, I get to combine my two loves. I'm a comedy writer on the TV show, so I get to combine science and comedy. And I even got Neil deGrasse Tyson to dress up like Katy Perry. I'm sorry, that right there is like the win of the universe. And I'm a correspondent, and on this show that's generally very much focused on space, I get to bring in anthropology. I did a segment at a uh, chimpanzee sanctuary for re rehabilitated chimps who uh, had been living at a medical facility, and I got to talk about why primates make horrible pets and should never be used in medical research. I also got to uh, <laughs> do a participant observational study, ethnographic study, of cosplayers at Comic-Con. I got to dress up like Lady Startalk, who was like a David Bowie meets uh, a space warrior hybrid. And I got to talk about uh, basically why these quote unquote nerds dress up and, well, like to look like, you know, Superman or Captain America and show that the, they're humans just like the rest of us and they just want to play, engage in play. Again, bringing it back to primates, primates love to play. So I've also tackled social issues. I've realized uh, that biological anthropology doesn't just have to talk about boobs and, and Bigfoot and whatnot. We can talk about things that really matter in the world, like race, gender pluralities and sexuality. In 2015, I did a video talking about something that biological anthropologists already know, that there's no biological basis to racial classification, that race is a, is a cultural construct, it is very much real, but there is no clear line that you can cut between groups commonly referred to as races. And it's something that anthropologists seem to understand, and we know, but America seems to not have caught on yet. And uh, fortunately, anthropologists liked the video, shared it, whatnot. Neo-Nazis and white supremacists hated the video, shared it on their own websites, came back with their own response videos, using pseudoscience and misinterpreted sciences, uh, science to back up their racist ideology. And that's when I realized that, wow, we really need to try to tackle these myths and debunk them head on because it's just going to get worse. And so I feel like biological anthropology is coming into a time where we are in a unique position to change the way the world thinks and feels. We can tell our stories, the human story, in a way that helps people understand that we are all far more similar than different. Hopefully uniting a United States that is very much divided right now. In 2016 and 2017, we are seeing a rise in hate crimes. A rise. And I don't need to tell you why that is. I think we all know. But this is a time that biological anthropologists can get out there and change that. We have a voice. And no, I know it's scary sometimes. You don't want to get in front of a, a camera. Uh, you don't want to put yourself out there. Because let's face it, scientists can be mean to each other. However, there's other ways you can do that. You can take to Twitter. You can take to Facebook if you want, although that can get messy. Let's all be fair. But know your strengths. If you're an excellent writer, write a blog. Uh, write an op-ed. If you've got a great sense of humor, again, Twitter is a great way to tackle those sorts of things, or write a funny blog. Uh, if you do feel comfortable in front of the camera, say yes to being a talking head. We need talking heads out there talking about what they know as experts, because if you don't do it, somebody else is going to do it, and they're going to mess it up, and you're going to be mad. We're all going to be mad. Uh, and if you're really brave, run for office. 
How awesome would it be to have biological anthropologists informing policy, actually making change? So biological anthropology matters. You matter. Your stories matter. So get out there and keep telling the human story because you can make a difference. Thank you.